It's Friday, and I'm back with the next in our Fanzine Friday series. Today we're taking a look at the Doom Book of Chaos, number three from 1981. Please stick around. I'm AZ Mountaineer, and this is our channel, Old School Rules, where we celebrate the community of old school gamers and grognards who like classic RPGs, miniatures, magazines, and everything that goes with it. Each week on the Fanzine Friday series, we take a fanzine from my collection off the shelf for a closer look, and today that's the Doom Book of Chaos, number three, from 1981. Hope you enjoy the video. For the past couple of weeks, we've been taking a look at a fanzine from the UK called the Doom Book of Chaos. This is the work of a couple of guys, Brad Bennett and Des Irwin, and uh, this is the size we're used to. This is a bright yellow just barely thicker than normal paper cover and then regular paper folded in half. Uh, it comes in this week at a full 27, uh, full 27 pages. I really like the, this, uh, this product uh, quite, quite a bit. So these guys, as they mentioned in, at the very beginning, they were interested in doing more than D&D and in this episode they'll have some additional type of material. Uh, so let's get started. With, we'll take a look at the cover. Brad Bennett, he does all of the artwork. Uh, in some respects, I like these guys' artwork because this is the kind of art this is like that I could have done, right? It's a lot of these fanzines have just really fantastic art, which is great in and of itself. But I like the amateur version here. Uh, I, there's some type of a, a crystal or gem stuck in this rock that juts up here, and then I've got the cross with different kind of ruins and symbols on it. And then this actually goes a full front back, um, and so you've got the the bird with the nest and. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, I, I like it quite a bit. In their um, initial letter, they you know they mentioned that they're trying to do more. That this this one has got some reviews, some sci-fi, and some Rune Quest in addition to D and D. Um, I don't know if this is a dig or not, but I think it is. They say uh, we've had many contributions and several more on the way. No magazine, and then they have the words especially Storm Lord, but then that's hashed out. Can continue without a steady flow of aid from articles of articles and artwork. Uh, so the Storm Lord, we haven't done that one, but I have most of those in my collection. Is another uh, fanzine from over in the UK. So I don't know if that was a like I said a jab at them or not. They, they mentioned how they've had to raise the price a little bit, uh, but it is getting a bit bigger as well. They also mentioned that issues one, three, one, two, and three are available back issues as a collector's pack. So that's an interesting comment they have there. Uh, they also say that they would be interested in entertaining a play-by-mail game if people want to express interest in that. So again, I usually do the table of contents, but theirs is quite good and it's all there. So I just thought I'd print it also because it has this great artwork with it. Um, the, uh, the editorial. Uh, I just mentioned that we've got the contents page, which just has some art, things from the crypt, which are new monsters, D&D &D editions. So here's a funny thing about this fanzine, right? These are just local guys doing photocopying, essentially. So I'm missing um, page five and then uh, page 24. It's like it just somehow in the copier, like I've got the one side of that piece of paper, but the back side of that ended up being blank. So. Unfortunately, I have no idea what was in D&D editions this month or this issue. Thune continues a look at their home city, which is quite good. They give more details about more parts of the city. Infinite Worlds is a, a discussion of planets that they've created for use in a traveler or other sci-fi game. And so it's just a description of a world they've made up. Talk about the atmosphere, what kind of things are on the world and so forth. The reviews are of Deities and Demigods, the hardbound book for AD&D has just come out. And they, they say it's, they, they like it, it's better than the small folio sized um, version that came out with the original wood grain box. Um, but it's also, they say, you know, it's kind of expensive, relatively speaking. And so if you want to play AD&D, they're like, you know, you need to go get the hardcover Monster Manual, hand, Player's Handbook, and DMG first before you consider getting this book, even though it's so awesome. And then they have a review of a, a war game called Cross of Iron um, that they say they give it a 9 out of 10, so they liked it, you know, a lot. The Strange Fane is... Uh, a module which dominates this, it takes up a third of the space, so it's quite extensive. It's well done, we'll talk about it. Horde of Wonders are new um, magic items. Tales from Morjack is just the narrative about 
the latest tale of their home campaign. And again, I'm, I only have one or two pages of that. The Tome of Darkness was going to be a discussion of converting D&D to RuneQuest, but now it's just going to be random thoughts he has about uh, role-playing. And then the back cover. All right, so Tales from the Crypt. Um, he mentions here he only has two monsters this time. The Marsh Giant, which he's got a drawing of, is just a big giant that lives in marsh. It can breathe water. It claws you. It hugs you. But in it, its special attack is it can spit out sort of this web-like substance that will stick you, and you'll be immobilized for two to eight rounds if you fail your saving throw. So it's sort of a breath weapon that behaves like a spell. The other monster they have is the Silver Hydra, which has uh, Hydra except for its scales are silver. It's in most ways a Hydra except when you cut off a head, a lightning bolt will shoot out from it and hit the closest uh, person wearing metal armor. And then if you completely kill it, the whole thing explodes in, a, in, a, in, a, um, uh, well, in an explosion of pyrotechnics and does 1d8 damage. Uh, so there's your two new monsters for this time around. Thune, this is the third, uh, there's third fanzine, third time they talk about Thune. They give more details about a particular part. This is a very seedy part of town. I do like the, the emphasis they have here on how likely it is that you can get sick from eating in sort of a, a rundown place that serves food. You can get a um, uh, chance of attempted theft or pickpocket. Uh, and it's quite significant, it's, you know, 5% to 50% chance that someone's going to try and steal something from your characters while they're at these places, which probably, if you're in a town that has a seedy part of town, um, should be more common than maybe I make it in my own game. I don't tend to think about random encounters of people trying to steal, but they probably would, right? That's probably a part of life in a town like that. Uh, Infinite Worlds, here's their discussion of this uh, um, uh, for, for travel or sci-fi, whatever. Here's the comic, Captain Broadswords, and he says, Hark, a wanderer. That's Captain Broadsword, the main character. Greetings, I'm Captain Broadsword. And he's like, I'm Rune Swinson, says the Nordic-looking guy. And then poof, it explodes. He says, oh, an explosive rune. He says, My name's Rune Swinson. And it, again, at the bottom, it says another uh, bad pun. So here's the main part of the fanzine, which is the strange fane of Zilkor Zorth. And a fane is, uh, you know, like a temple. They said it's designed for RuneQuest, and some of the stuff they discuss in here is clearly RuneQuest related because it doesn't have any reference in, in Dungeons & Dragons, like some of the monsters and stuff that they discuss. But this is the interesting part, so I'll give you the background. The Cult of Zilkor Zorth, uh, which studied death, uh, earth, and spirit ruins, which is a RuneQuest thing, was powerful and prosperous. Its priests were renowned for their wisdom and mystical abilities. But suddenly the cult was struck down by a terrible curse, causing the priests to slowly waste away until they died and became non-corporal shadows of their formal self. In the spectral form, they were condemned to remain eternally wandering the world, wailing in ceaseless agony. That's the background legend. And so someone has gone there to try and clear this place out, discover what's going on, and potentially restore it. Um, and then they don't come back. And so now you've been hired, your party's been hired to go and try and um, go through the f find the missing people and see if you can clear it out now, the reward is 20,000 gold pieces which seems a little high but there it is um, here is the main map which is the you know the temple and they've got that you would go through and then there's a, if you find the entrance um, there's a number there's like a puzzle you got to figure out and you can get into the crypt down below I think generally it's really well done uh, it has a good feeling like it, they've got the theme right there's clearly going to be a decent amount of undead here because of the spirits you know, some other things have moved into this abandoned temple uh, the only issue I have is that in fact when you get there this the head of the party that went in ahead of you is still alive uh, in the subterranean area I just don't understand how it is that he was captured and thrown into a jail cell because there's no one down there manning the jail cells um, I don't know if the ghosts somehow figured out how to, even their incorporal, drag his body around. So I'd probably come up with an answer to that question so that that made sense. But um, other than that, I think this is this is really well done. It's a it's a solid adventure. It's good thematic um, consistency throughout. You could do it in one nice long session for sure. Uh, sort of a you know discreet uh, campaign. 
All right. Then we have our magic items, and this time it is candles. I like this a lot. So these are the candles of power. Take their ideas and, you know, modify them, right? But the idea is really good. So you find these magically enchanted candles. You light them. The smoke has some, think of like as an incense, right? A cloud is formed, and it has effects. And these effects are not all good. Like some of them will heal you. Some of them put you to sleep against your will. Um, some of them will do damage. Some of them will make you sick. Some of them will turn you to turn to one of them. One of them will turn you to stone. Um, one of them that is multicolored, so it does all the above in in turn as it burns down. And then it, the last, last color that's in there will cause it to explode. Um, one of them will uh, rain gold coins. I'm probably gonna do that one. Uh, one will cause a blizzard to surround you, and that does be sort of buffeted by the cold and the wind. Uh, one gives off this sparkle, this is an interesting one, sparkling gas, and then whenever you snuff out the candle, the, the gas condenses into shards of crystal, razor sharp, which then fall down and do damage to anybody that's inside the, the cloud. So, very good idea, I think. You might change it up yourself, right? But the idea of these candles uh, I like. And like I said, maybe there's a guy in town that you want to have as an NPC who creates these candles. Maybe there's just a rumor about someone who used to make them and so that explains why you keep finding them around town, but it's a good idea. The Tome of Darkness, as he said, was going to be a discussion about conversion. But he says now they have more books for RuneQuest, so the official people have done that. I'm just going to start sharing my ideas. And now his idea, in honor of the new TSR Deities and Demigods book, how can your player character become a demigod? Uh, I can tell you from the start, I don't love this idea. Um, for, wouldn't, I would not use it in my campaign. It's too Monty Hall. But if you wanted to go there, I like his concept. And what he says is you accumulate these points. He calls them aura points. Every five levels, you get an aura point. And then when you die in his campaign, the next character you roll up is, in fact, the reincarnation of your last character. And so if you have gained at least level five, then you mark down your character's best two attributes and worst attribute. And then when you re-roll, but you have to give your best roll stat to your former character's best stat and your second best one to your former character's second best and your worst one to the former character's worst one. The other three, you can do whatever you want. And then you can assign these aura points. So let's say your best score on your new character was a 17. You had an aura point. You can, you make, you can make that an 18 if you want. Uh, I don't think you have to assign it to your top one, but you, you probably would. But again, I guess it depends on what your new character is going to be, right? Uh, and then he says that, you know, generally, obviously, you can't go more than 18. But if you get a character who has, um, through the system or, or roles, ends up with two 18s, now you're a hero. And once you achieve, achieve hero status from there on, your character or its reincarnation can go up to 21. When you get two stats to 21, now you're a demigod. And, uh, and you can take it from there. But in any event, you know, it's... Um, not what I would want to do in my campaign, but I but it is well thought out and it's an interesting way to play, especially with the idea that you want people to let their characters sort of be connected to their former characters. So that's it for the fanzine, the Doom Book of Chaos. It's, the video is a little shorter because, like I said, a third of this fanzine is taken up by the the adventure itself, which is quite good. Uh, he does mention at the end that they're going to have a creature competition, and so you're supposed to send in your ideas for what you want to design for those creatures. Hope you guys have a great fr rest of the Friday. Have a great weekend. Hope you get a chance to play some games. And until next time, my friend, keep rolling 20s.